A lot of Missouri fans are understandably upset about tonight's national championship game. Well, I'm going to salvage it for you with a little something I know a lot about called money. And yes, let's also talk about Xavier Pinson. Is the juice worth the squeeze if you're a Tiger fan at this point? And also, how about some more context on Dennis Gates not having any assistant coaches just yet? All this and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And this episode is brought to you by Stat Hero. Stat Hero is reshaping the way you play fantasy sports. Dozens of house-based games to play daily. No sharks, no funky props, just your skill versus the lineups you choose. Sign up today at stathero.com slash locked on and yes we only have one game left in march madness of course it is the national championship and wouldn't you know it it's kansas against north carolina so obviously we as missouri fans gonna be a little bit tough to get up for this one in fact i'm really tempted to just maybe skip the entire first half maybe check out the post wrestlemania monday night raw see what's happening in the world of wrestling instead of checking out a what what promises to be a somewhat annoying event for us as Missouri fans because not only are you going to have stupid old Bill Self Burrito Bill and yes help welcome folks this is a biased Missouri show if you're new here but now we have Roy Williams too him gumming up the works and I, I'm half expecting Roy to show up in a half Kansas half North Carolina polo because that guy just desperately wants to be loved by everybody doesn't he but anyway obviously we got here because somehow Kansas despite having one of their on paper least talented teams probably in a couple decades under Bill Self and despite the reasons for that being basically well according to Bill Self they had a rogue employee over at Adidas who somehow this rogue employee managed to to just basically try his best to buy the Jayhawks a bunch of players among these players apparently Zion Williamson among others interesting how when Missouri has a rogue employee like a rogue tutor for instance well that person seems to be doing everything in her power to try to screw Missouri over and make their lives harder. But no, somehow Bill Self, when he has rogue employees, yes, you can see my skepticism here. Not only that, oh, on the other side, another good bad guy. You've got North Carolina. Well, how did they get here? Well, they took their African-American studies program and then used it to basically defraud everybody out of a, a, a legitimate degree. Not only... And here was their excuse. Not only did they use this for, obviously, for athletes, well, they got out of punishment by convincing the NCAA, hey, it wasn't just for athletes. No, the students, the regular students themselves were able, were able to take these fraudulent classes. So congrats to us. We let you buy on a technicality. But again, meanwhile, Missouri gets punished for the most ridiculous stuff ever. So again, sorry for that quick recap, but I had to catch everybody up in case you had forgotten so really, how are we going to salvage this national championship game? That's really the question here. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're going to bet against Kansas, folks. That's exactly what we're going to do here. And you know what? The smart money right now seems to be going Kansas's way. I hate to say it. And when you look over at the line at betonline.net, well, Kansas is not only a four-point favorite. If you look at the money line, look at North Carolina to win outright. Plus 170 is a little bit suspiciously high to me for a for a four-point line. That, to me, is them sort of begging you to take that North Carolina money game. That, that money line, excuse me. What that tells me is my good friends, those devious sons of guns over at betonline.net, I think they think Kansas is going to win, and they're kind of begging you to take North Carolina. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm a sucker, but I'm taking the bait. 
mostly because I want a reason to watch this game. I want a reason to have some fun in the last college basketball game of the season. And also, frankly, again, not the most talented Kansas team in the world. It hasn't exactly been a murderer's row of opponents here in March. I'll be honest, I had Kansas in the final four, so it's not as though I didn't believe in them whatsoever. But at the same time, I think you've seen North Carolina, this run they've had, whatever team they were back in, in December or January, that all factors into the Ken Pomeroy projections and probably your line projections too. But to me, that doesn't have a lot of a lot of impact on how I view this team. Now, I will say this is a classic letdown game opportunity if it weren't for the national championship, right? That's another thing. I think maybe we're over we're overrating the the letdown aspect of yes, that Duke North Carolina game. In some ways, for the the fans of those programs, that was almost more important than another national championship. But that's just the fans. If you're a player on this team, well, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a champion forever. To see your rafter, to see your your banner up in the rafters in the Dean Dome, wherever it might be, and the other the other building that shall not be named over in Kansas. So to me. You actually look at, look at it on paper. You look how Caleb Love has played in this tournament. You look at how Hubert Davis has been willing to play his best players for practically all 40 minutes. I think North Carolina has a good chance to win this game. So to me, if you're going to let me put down $10 and win 17 if the Heels win this ball game, to me, that juice is definitely worth the squeeze. So you know what? Let's put a little 10 bucks on it. Have a little fun over at betonline.net. And speaking of the juice being worth the squeeze, well, I think we could ask the same thing about Xavier Pinson. Because on paper, he's an obvious take for the Missouri Tigers, despite his pe- previous baggage. But guess what? That baggage exists. So let's balance those two things coming up. But first, let's talk about Stat Hero. And yes, this is your last chance to play Stat Hero's NCAA single game pick 'em contest. Yeah, you've got a really small lineup, a group of players tonight, just two teams. So you know what? Really, really zoom, really zoom in on what you want, really hone in on the kind of advantages and edges you have and take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage. Start again, focusing on the players you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads. Long odds are funky, difficult to understand props. This is what daily fantasy was truly meant to be. So sign up for free right now. Stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use the promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. Stathero.com slash locked on. Promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And thanks for telling a friend we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I tell you, if you follow Twitter, you follow all the stuff online, it's almost kind of amusing how many different players who are in the transfer portal have Missouri as at least mentioned in their top five, their top ten, or at least According to reporters, hey, this guy's heard from X, Y, and Z. And inevitably, Missouri ends up in a lot of these guys' top 20s or or whatever it might be. Now, quite frankly, there's so many dozens and dozens of players who have been linked to Missouri online. I'm not even going to attempt to begin to sift through them. That would be honestly a waste of my time at a certain point. But there is one guy in the portal who obviously, and among many other guys is, who's listed, well, former Missouri point guard Xavier Pinson, spent this past season at LSU, made some, made some waves during the NCAA tournament by wearing the Missouri puffy jacket, as I made fun of, made that Seinfeld reference recently. Well, you know what? Dave Matter, I thought, had some interesting insight per his chat last week, his weekly chat over at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, 
Here's a here's a couple paragraphs here. I'm just going to read this verbatim. This is Dave Matter on Xavier Pinson. He says he has a history of spending his off seasons flirting with multiple fan bases via his Instagram account. He's doing the same thing right now. He likes the attention and drama. There were there was off court tension at times, and on the floor he wouldn't run the plays Martin wanted him to run. It caused issues internally. I was told recently that it reached the point where an otherwise mild-mannered veteran player stepped in and addressed the problem mid-game late in the 2021 season, but things didn't get much better. Pinson's family members were extremely critical on social media. That's putting it nicely. Lots of drama. Is that something a first-year coach needs? I sat courtside at the LSU-Arkansas game in the SEC tournament and watched Will Wade unload on Pinson for not playing defense. Then he benched him for the final eight minutes of the assistant had to console Pinson on the bench. It was Wade's last game at LSU, and by then, there were already some rumblings from LSU staff that Pinson wasn't coming back next season. He can be a productive playmaker, but he's not a good shooter and still turnover prone. It's fair to say you can find better players in the portal with less baggage. Well, I think that's pretty well said there by Gabe, or excuse me, by Dave Matter. Ah, I conflated Gabe and Dave. Who can who can blame me there? But no, seriously, I, I think that's a pretty good point there by Dave Matter. My my initial reaction was, hey, just going through what Missouri went through this past season on the floor, just that absolute dearth of playmaking at the point guard position of a lead ball handler at times of somebody who could just get the ball down court confidently, much less somebody with the incredible first step ability that Xavier Pinson has. And, you know, just as a special ball handler in a lot of ways. But again, with all that talent does not only come the off court baggage, but as matter alluded to there at the end of his thing, a bit turnover prone and also not the greatest outside shooter in the world. So again, that's something that Missouri would like to avoid. And you throw on top of that, all that off-court drama. And frankly, I don't know how in the world he's going to be eligible as a graduate transfer. Because from what I understand, he left Missouri dozens, literally dozens, multiple dozens of credits short of, of, of graduating. He's got a long ways to go before he gets a degree. So the idea that he's going to be a graduate transfer is going to take some real circus-like manipulation of, of entrances at, at Missouri or, frankly, anywhere for him to be eligible. So, I don't know. All of this, to me, just adds up to, you know what? On paper, yes, Missouri would be, and certainly Xavier Pinson is somebody who would have upgraded last year's team. Again, on paper, if you're Missouri, if you're Dennis Gates, you don't even have a relationship with this guy, Maybe let's pass and go somewhere else. I understand there's a Chicago connection there between the two guys, but to me, I don't know. The juice just isn't worth the squeeze. And by the way, speaking of Dennis Gates, I'll, I'll have to admit I'm still a little bit surprised that he hasn't hired a single assistant coach yet. In fact, he's got two recruits signed on board before he's even hired one assistant, but you know what? Maybe I should step back for a second, give you a little bit of context, because I was reminded that when Conzo Martin was hired, that Cornell Mann and Chris Hollander, his two top assistants, weren't announced as on board but about two and a half weeks after Conzo was hired. So that gives you an idea of where we are. And it, you know, just look at the calendar. Hey, tonight's the national championship. Perhaps Dennis Gates has been in contact with people who are. In the final four, you know, who knows? Again, all of this is up in the air. And I would say if we're still talking about this this time next week, if next Monday I'm still talking to you and saying, hey, where are the Missouri assistant basketball coaches? Well, then I'm going to actually start to worry. At this point, I'm just going to say, hey, he's taking his time, doing his due diligence, going through the process, maybe letting some people play out their seasons or let the options perhaps that other people have play out and resolve themselves. Who knows? But just going from past involvement, the previous Missouri administration, this timeline really isn't that crazy. Obviously, if you're a Missouri fan, you've noticed that a lot 
of players have transferred out this season. Anton Brookshire, Jordan, Jordan Wilmore, Trevin Brazil, among others, have entered the portal. Sean Duru Gordon before that. Perhaps Javon Pickett will be on a new team as a graduate transfer next season. But boy, nobody has taken the cake like the LSU Tigers. Their new coach, Matt McMahon, is going to have to start quite literally from scratch because all of all of LSU's 11 guys that were on the team at the end of the season that had a scholarship, well, they're all in the portal. Yes, all 11 of them. That is absolutely unbelievable. But believe it or not, actually, it does seem like the portal, at least the percentage of players in the portal, at least from the SEC, is actually down slightly from the 2021 offseason. According to Sam Snelling, Rock M Nation, he had some really good context here, I thought, thanks to Sam for that. He said, after the 2021 season, there was a record number of transfers out, including 72 in the SEC alone. According to Sam's math, that's, 40, that's almost 40% of the league transferred out. Well, this year so far, according to Sam's count, there have been 38 guys enter the portal. Again, that's not even close to 72. 38 still seems like a lot, you know, maybe three per team, something like that. But clearly it's slowing down a good bit. Obviously, there's time for more guys to enter the portal, but it does seem like we're going to fall quite a bit short of 72. So if you're arguing out there that, hey, let's pump the brakes, let's not change all the rules just because of one sort of fluky or, or, or I guess I could say, an outlier COVID season where we let everybody have a free year and essentially transfer for free. Well, maybe that's a good sign that this stuff hopefully will at least somewhat take care of itself over time. I'm still, I'm still skeptical of that, but at least there's a sign that maybe this is slowing down a tiny bit once the sort of free years process them process themselves out over the years. And coming up, I've got more news on former former Georgia quarterback JT Daniels, who is talking to Missouri and has entered the transfer portal. Plus, some thoughts on Asia Blackwell that don't exactly comport with the idea that, oh, Missouri was better off without her. So coming up, let's talk about that. But first, how about bet online? You know, I told you to take the heels tonight, take them to win outright. More mostly just for the fun of it, right? But also, I think that's a pretty darn good value, too. If your best argument is letdown game, I don't know. To me, that's hard to factor in. But of course, the Masters starts this week. They've got you covered with golf, MMA, NBA basketball. It's all there at betonline.net, including live betting, esports, scores, the whole deal. This is truly the number one site for gambling. And the only one we tr trust here at the Locked On Network. So check them out at betonline.net, where the game starts. Transfer portal quarterback JT Daniels is set to be in Morgantown, West Virginia this Saturday for an official visit. Apparently, this is going to be his final official visit before he shuts it down for a few weeks, ultimately makes his decision on where he's going to play his last year of el eligibility. Will it be with West Virginia? Will it be with Missouri? Will it be with Oregon State? Well, only JT is going to know here in the next few weeks. But again, as I've said before, it does concern me just a tiny bit that if Daniels were to come to Missouri, hypothetically speaking, it does concern me that he's missed all of spring football. No real time to get a ton of off-season work in with, with receivers. Sure, a couple months here before August camp gets underway, but that's concerning. His injury history is concerning, number two. And also, number three, another red flag here to me, just a, a lack of mobility that is concerning. Again, we saw what Connor Basilak did when he was when he was compromised with his running ability last season, both with his general sort of lack of mobility, but more so to me, an, an obvious hamstring injury that was revealed as the season went along there. But to me, it's one thing if you can be a statue with a great arm down in Georgia when nine times out of ten, your team's going to win the line of scrimmage. 
But it's a different thing at Missouri in the SEC each and every week. The Tigers aren't going to be winning the, the line of scrimmage 90% of the time. So to me, you need a quarterback who can buy time in the pocket, buy time outside of the pocket, throw on the move a little bit, make some stuff happen, and also keep the defense honest in the run game on the backside of the defense too. At the same time, if the Tigers got Daniels, I can't see I'd be upset about it or anything. I, I just... If you think it's a, a surefire, oh, Missouri's way better at the position. This is a two, three win improvement. I, I'd pump the brakes on that. And another thing I've been telling Missouri women's basketball fans all season to tap the brakes on a little bit was assuming that somehow the Tigers were better off without Asia Blackwell. And listen, I get it. South Carolina lost two games all season. They just took down the national championship by beating UConn pretty pretty convincingly na last night, by the way. So don't get me wrong, a thrilling win for the Tigers, a really exciting victory, and Asia wasn't a part of it. So it's understandable why you might at least ask that question. But I I'm just telling you, when I've watched this, the, the Tiger women the past season, no part of me was saying, boy, if, if Asia just wasn't out there getting all these rebounds and scoring all these points, that, that would really solve their issues. It's actually quite the opposite. You saw that the Tigers really missed her rebounding ability, I thought, against Arkansas in the tournament and her ability to break down a defense as well because obviously that's one of the hardest things to get at any level of the game. And by the way, again, somebody out there agrees with me, Chantel Jennings at The Athletic. Well, she did her rankings of the top players in the women's transfer portal. Number one, Asia Blackwell. So I'm sorry, Robin Pinchton messed up there. She messed up that relationship. She messed up playing that the Arkansas game. You're the to me, you play or you don't. You can't just go halfway on that. And to me, Robin Pinchton was just kind of halfway in the pool. She was neither in nor out, and you either got to jump in or stay on out. And that was just riding the fence isn't the time. It's not the time to do it late March. I, that just made no sense to me whatsoever. And if that was a big reason why Asia decided to take her basketball talents elsewhere, elsewhere, excuse me, well, I, I can't blame her whatsoever. So with all that being said, thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked on NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy, former NFL corner Eric Crocker. They bring the draft to life every day with insight and analysis on the prospects and NFL front offices. So check it out. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks for listening to Locked on Mizzou.